friends i am dr amdekar and in this video i am going to discuss about the indications and interpretation of a test which we often commonly do especially in a serious situation and that is a serum electrolytes we know that the key electrolytes are sodium potassium and chloride and in addition one may also consider in specific situations a bicarb calcium magnesium and so on but commonly we order a serum sodium potassium and chloride friends we must have observed that we order these three together almost like t3 t4 tss together why do we do that the reason is all these three key elements work together for example the sodium and chloride are responsible to manage the body water volume the blood volume and when you talk about potassium and sodium together then they manage the nerve and a muscle function together and of course potassium also manages the heart muscle function therefore all these three elements work almost together and the disturbance of one may often cause also the changes in the other elements and that's why we always order serum sodium potassium and chloride together having said this we also may in a specific situation as i mentioned we could also order bicarb and calcium magnesium now the question is we have been always talking in this series of videos a rationality and we have always said that even to choose a laboratory test we should be so much rational that we should use the most minimum test based on our clinical acumen however friends this is one example which is an exception for example clinician is not able to assess the disturbance of these three key electrolytes clinically in isolation we know that hyponatremia may cause drowsiness and even coma a hypokalemia would cause muscle weakness and even paralysis but when all three together make the final judgment for a clinician a clinician is not able to assess merely on his clinical bedside diagnosis and therefore we have to be a little more lenient in ordering this test even with a mere suspicion does it mean that you order it in your routine general practice probably not so the point is in a routine clinical practice a short duration mild to moderate illness does not demand ordering serum electrolytes however if the disease is acute severe or chronic persistent then very likely and of course in icu setting where multiple organs are affected and electrolyte test becomes the most important therefore we know that indications are far and wide for example you often have a gi problem a renal problem but besides that even a heart problem or a liver disease or an adrenal disease they all ultimately cause some disturbance in electrolytes and therefore if you face such diseases invariably a serum electrolytes is a reasonable rational order to test and therefore beyond this you will be surprised that a severe infection like for example pneumonia or an acute uti may also have a commonly a hyponatremia friends hyponatremia is extremely common however not necessarily a mild hyponatremia may clinically manifest but we know the degree of hyponatremia only by test and then take a decision whether a mere oxygen would help pneumonia with antibiotics to get better and the hyponatremia will get corrected by itself so mere fact that you demonstrated hyponatremia in your test doesn't mean necessarily that you need to act but you have realized a wide range of diseases wide range of organs which get disturbed 
can really affect the serum electrolytes and therefore the indications are far and wide. Now when you talk to really uh, assessment of serum hyponatremia, when you get a report, the first thing that you must be making sure is that it is not a pseudo hyponatremia. What does that mean? If a sample has an excess of lipids or proteins, then likely the test result may be enormous. And therefore, you want to be sure that it's not a pseudo hyponatremia. Then of course, once you know hyponatremia, we need to look at the basic cause of such a problem, whether it is a dilutional hyponatremia or whether it's an SIADH or for example a salt losing variety and so on and so forth. For which of course you may need to further try a serum osmolality like in an SIADH there is no dehydration, often even a bit more of hydration and the osmolality is normal while in a salt losing and other issues uh, serum osmolality is also low and so also you might need a urine sodium excretion and then you go further to decide whether you want to infuse extra sodium and in a typical SIADH the fluid restriction is the basis of treatment and that is why even there is a hyponatremia in the blood test you don't rush to add sodium to your infusion fluids. Having said this, hypernatremia is not so common but we must know that after all if electrolytes are much less excreted but water is largely excreted like in a polyuric situation for example diabetes insipidus then you know that this is likely to cause hypernatremia and it may present initially just with irritability therefore again any situation where there is a water loss much more than electrolyte loss one must consider serum electrolytes and that's what hypernatremia is. Of course, very important point is that some of the GI diseases or renal diseases or even an adrenal disease may either have a hyponatremia or a hypernatremia depending on what kind of physiological disturbances have occurred in a given disease. And therefore again, a clinical assessment of electrolyte imbalance is nearly impossible. When it comes to potassium, we know again that hypokalemia is pretty common and of course it's common uh, when you're starving a lot, tough time, because the kidneys keep on secreting potassium irrespective of what the pool of potassium is. And therefore, hypokalemia is very common, of course again in GI losses or maybe a renal disorder and so on and so forth. So the indications of doing electrolytes are too many as I mentioned and the moment you look at a potassium levels either low or high you need to be also sure whether it is not a true hypokalemia or hyperkalemia because a metabolic alkalosis may have hypokalemia and the metabolic acidosis will have a hyperkalemia and that is not something that uh, you would miss and therefore again you need to look at the acid base imbalance as well. Having said this, a bicarb is not commonly required, but a low bicarb naturally would talk about acidosis and a high bicarb will be an alkalosis, but a better way to define uh, the difference between respiratory metabolic compromisation and therefore an ABG is the ideal situation there, but even a bicarb sometimes would be used. And when it comes to calcium, for example, hypocalcemia is also common in specific situations like rickets where you don't have to worry about any other electrolytes but just do calcium, phosphorus, alkaline, and phosphatase. However, if it's a renal rickets, then you would add on uh, electrolytes other than calcium as well. And rarely you may get hypercalcemia as may happen in some of the cancerous situation. And in typical adrenal disease, uh, potassium is increased if it's an Addison's disease, sodium is low and therefore you may get a clue to a possible adrenal disease. Rarely you would need even magnesium to go by because magnesium also helps 
in calcium metabolism and therefore calcium and magnesium often are ordered together in a given situation where there is a muscle weakness and therefore in a specific situation you might also do like an RTA for example and having said this in this video I want to again stress that serum electrolytes is a very rational test even without a clinical clue because clinical assessment is difficult and once you pick up an abnormal situation, abnormal report, one has to first decide whether it is pseudo or true and once if it is true then you start looking at where is the organ, which is the organ, where is the defect and accordingly try to kind of look at it further. That's not the uh, subject of this video. And therefore, I feel I made pretty clear. In my next video, I will recap all the seven videos that my colleagues have been talking about besides me. And thereafter, we will move on to an imaging and some other tests which at times are also required. Thank you very much.